Union, from England to America, and he comes to the Lord, the Prince of Preacher. Quote from this man, he says, Lord, let me be rich towards thee. I have better sent on to my treasure in heaven more of any substance that I have already sent. So he keeps in it. I will at once remember the church in its mission, orphans, aged saints, and poor brethren. These are dark treasury boxes, and I will bank my money there. I love it. For where your treasure is, the one that you value most, there will your heart be also. You know, our young ladies, not only young ladies, they mean young men, they value and they sum us about their body, which is not bad, it is commendable. They want to be in the best figure of their physical body. If you are 18 or even 50 today, and Rebecca at the very young age, even the food that she is taking uh, is conscious. And then I were happy, I was surprised because we have Bible study for the seminar at Brother John Jones' house. And she just ate a small amount of food that they had in Blacktown. The moment she arrived at Brother John's place, she was in the, what do you call that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's already biking and, and doing some kind of exercise because my tummy wants to, I don't want a big tummy. Look at the very young age. And not that I want fat, that very young age, they're so conscious about the fat intake. And she loves to dance. I presume she doesn't want to dance if she is so fat, that's why she wants to be still. <laughs> because you'll become a water person when you're fat dancing. <laughs> And the world was so big, but the does. Now, what happened is they discipline their body for the way. Now, she, the young ladies, she is no chocolate. Sometimes, maybe once a month, donut, because donut is donut eat. She controls the appetite in a big meal. She run, she enrolled in a jelly cream or here in Ruti Hill. Burning the fats. Now she checked her weight two times a day. I was in Brooklyn and I can see, I see this, and I'm an observant person. Uh, is a fat guy working before she, she uh, he will call and say, he looked at, he stayed there at the, for one minute. Maybe there will be a miracle that will go down one, one pound. So, so long, you know. And then, and then after one minute, you, so you can get it maybe in 10 seconds. Because it, it, uh, you know, it's a, we call that a GD town, and it starts up and down, and then it's going down and then like this. And then, I observe that I, I'm not that kind of person when it comes to doing something like that. And later on, after maybe an hour or two hours, he went back again and looked in the way. He said, come on. In two hours, uh, he just looked again. It becomes a, a, you know, a habit, a habit. It, it makes me laugh and smile to, to boom them. So what happened? I learned, I did check two times two. <laughs> Just one time. I, 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 I found out that there's about half pound when I have two hours uh, workout from the first and the little one, I check and there's half pound or sometimes one half kilo. It's a blessing. You know. And later on, you know, young ladies, they check many times after they have to work out, check their chin, there's some kind of protruding angle here, of my chin. If fat is forming along the side, and then look at his smile to, to the left, seeing the face, smile, he smile to the right, he smile to the front, doing like this, and, and moving around, opening the mouth, closing the mouth, looking in every angle of the view in the mirror. Now, if you have a video recorder, you could not believe what you are doing in front of the mirror just for the sake of way. Your, your health matters, the most important thing to you to become fit, which is really true. And that is good hoping to be Leo the Carpio one day. Now Jesus said, for where your treasure is, that is where your heart will also be. In a church, I remember at a wedding, do you accept this man to be your awful wedded husband? I do, for better for worse. I do, but not to keep. You know, listen to me. 
Yes, it is for life. You have no privilege to satisfy your eyes in the beauty of another woman, either younger, because the God has given you one wife all the days of your life, one husband. Maybe one day your wife has no more teeth. And she looks like a bankrupt lady and does in business. When you say I do or I love you, you are committed and you have one heart to deal with her alone. You are bound and it is only that where you can separate. There is no more option. There some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful women once they run out of their their teeth, they change their figure. But you can still love him or love her. So, so my wife is used to be without teeth. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I have some teeth. Okay, so this is something that's about the heart. Loving your wife is an investment. I talk money, including your relationship. I thought that's not a good part of this. Listen to me, and this is important. The moment you invest your life to your wife, whether she talk a lot, 7,000 words a day, you talk 2,500 a day, okay, that's, that's fun, that is double, that's a package deal. <laughs> no, that's not a negatory kind of comment. They are uh, they are emotional, tangled for them, they can understand the emotion, they can they are very uh, very sharp to know what's happening around. We thank God for them. Now, the moment you usher them in your investment, be patient with him or her. Never talk about our the person, our quit, our remain single, forget it. Because God brought him or her to you. And the first ministry that you are bringing to the Lord in your investment of your life is to be able to usher your wife before the throne of God. God, I have done my part. I have my life to her. It's a long journey of 50 years of, uh, you know, of all the hard ones and all the tough times. And yet I was able to finish it. Once you bring your wife and your husband to the Lord, that is a medal of honor, a crown of rejoicing. That is the first test before you can rest members of your family. Did you say amen? Amen. So, love your wife. And she is poor to keep. Amen. <laughs> Not to lose. Now, Martin Luther says, What a man loves, that is his God. For he carries it in his heart, he goes about with it night and day, he sleeps and waits with it, be it what it may, wealth or pleasure. This is what Martin Luther says. And so, the Bible is saying, industrious people are usually rewarded with prosperity. Many of you are already working so hard. That's a gift. Continue to work so hard. And enjoy. But laying up treasure for yourself is sin. He who is rich for himself is poor before God. Very poor. It's a very important to understand what you have today is an opportunity as a good manager and stewards of God to channel it into the right direction where God is saying, this is it. And you'll be rich before me. Loving your children, just giving time for them is an investment. Now the Bible says the light of the body is the eye. If your eye is single, if your eye is only focusing on one, you're blessed. Now the word single, it means soundness of the eye. It's sound. Some people have a cataract. Some people have as a problem to operate from the inside. Some with the retina, replacing of the retina, whatever it is. Some people have a fake eyes, and once they, they play basketball, they have a cousin or playing basketball or whatever. You know, in the early days, I didn't know that I thought it was a real eye. His name is Mrs. Stout. And, and then accidentally, uh, we jump in, we shake, we, we hit me with the jaw, and the eye is like a marble fall down to the basketball court. He was looking for the eye. It's like a marble because it was fake eye. So it's real eye. The problem is when you look to the left, the one eye is going forward. And that's a guard eyes. So you cannot play around guarding. What's your problem? So, so 
The eye of the body is the eye. If your eye is single, meaning it means soundness of the eye. Now in the classical Greek, this is used figuratively to denote simplicity, single focus or single view, looking right at its object. The whole body will be full of light. Church, look to the right object of your pursuit in life. This is high time, Pastor Why? This is high time because there is no security in our economic dreams and plans. The world is being bankrupt. We thank God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who owned the universe, the one who sent the thousand cattle upon the thousand in our mind, separate put our mind. He owns everything. Right now, you and I are rich because He owns all the gold and the silver in the world today. So invest. You are rich now. Invest. You are rich now. So many things to say, but I'll uh, show it to you. The one gives are two masters. You have to aim one thing at a time. One eye is very important. When you're driving in, going to my at the back of the road, now, we are driving there, what's out for the big trucks in the winding road, narrow road? Diff. If you are not very careful, you'll be hit by big trucks that are running so fast. In that part of road, going to Singleton, from my time, so much. Or if not, if you are not sharp enough, you are running, enjoying in the, in the valley after the mountain, there are big kangaroo, you will hit and run over kangaroo, and it will the way you are going down there so you don't have an accident. So church, church, people of God, have one eye. And Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters, you cannot serve two kings, you cannot save two aims in life. It is confusion when you love two persons with different interests in life. You cannot serve darkness and light at the same time. Serving God and serving the world as young people. Serving God, God thank you, Sunday is for you. When it comes to sin, begin to understand by saying, Hey, if you love me, love me alone. You cannot love two women at the same time. And God is saying, You cannot live sin and love me because you are in the middle of the war zone. And it's fighting today, the enemy is working double time, triple time, and God is working so much that the holy become holy. If you are in the middle of the war today, when the world is becoming worse and worse, you'll become dead meat not too long from now because your life is living in two directions. Make up your mind with single eye today. You know, as a single mother, a widow, widower, it seems that life is continuous hard up. It seems no one can share your burden. Keep giving, keep serving God, keep loving God, whatever you do, because you are rich in the kingdom of God. To the fatherless, he is the father. To the widow, he is the husband. To those who have no friend, he is a friend that is still closer than a brother. Regardless of your condition, maybe you are left out as young people, you are not accepted in the community because of your education forum. I tell you what, as you serve the Lord, millions and billions of saints and angels of the Lord waiting that one day He will work on you. 6.2 billion is nothing compared to billions and billions of angels that will say, hey, well, you know, hey, come, and they will rejoice with you because the artists, there's my come in the evening. But joy comes in the morning. So young people, be faithful. What is going to become uh, 15? Forget the fun for the first day. Oh, Pastor, that's normal. No, that's not normal. When you are young, fine. But when you hear the word of God, God is saying, Honey, come I want you to play with me. Father, I cannot make it. I understand. I am strong. All you have to do is to turn over your life into my hand. Allow me at my own prerogatives, at my own disposal, I will guide you into a life of the living. When you turn over your life to Him, don't take it back. Allow Him to become the driver of your destiny, and you will see the promised land. Amen? I'm closing today this beautiful thing. Yeah.
I tell you, church, there was a challenge for Joshua, and I wrote to it to you because this is a challenge for many, many of us today. We are single, and maybe you, know, you are, you know, a problem regardless of what's happening to you. Jesus said, invest your life. Lord, invest God. If you have nothing to invest, I tell you, the best investment is your life. God, I give to you my life. I give to you my pantalon. I give to you my few hours. Lord, Bible study prayer, if I can add extra to my prayer, it's not the worry. It is the motive, the intensity, the power, the craving, the fervor, the enthusiasm. Lord, I want to pray. I was sleeping. Lord, I want to pray more. You know, at 30 minutes in the early morning, it is between you and your God. Please don't give him an investment of the power. The moment you pray, you're already yawning. God, you understand me. I work eight hours today. I wake up four o'clock in the morning. And I have to cook at home. And then I have to, to wash the dishes. I have to, oh Lord, oh God, you understand. I have to wash all the clothes and then clean the house. So if I don't know, you understand anyway. You are gracious God. No. You are not putting in the proper perspective in how you divide your time. You are stealing the time for the Lord. Did you say amen? Don't steal the time for the Lord. Because if two hours for the uh, two hours for the minutes, that is your tithes to the Lord every day. What is the offering? Make it three hours. <coughs> if in five ten minutes you're sleeping, ask forgiveness to the Lord. And then we are like here. And then we'll have the we'll have the communion. I want you to hear this, and I give you a beautiful, beautiful application of the man of God. Joshua said, Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity, in truth, and put away the gods and perform which your father served on the other side in Egypt, and serve you the Lord, serve you the Lord. Now if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Now Joshua, in a very powerful declarative declar declar statement, very bold, and his choice was firm. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now Joshua made this declarative statement without any compromise, firm, and how he lived. His heart is, and his focus is an investment and an investment in life is Jesus Christ our Lord. And that is why he is one of the heroes of faith. It must be our declarative statement today to secure, not because of your thing at that you're not saved, you're saying that your investment is secured in the kingdom of God. I'll conclude with this beautiful, a beautiful life of a man by the name of a famous missionary to Africa by the name of C. T. Scott. The daughter told of her father last hours, great man of God, he was mightily by the Lord. Lying down, he was pacing around the house, the little house. It is said, I love this man, the way he invests his totality of his life. It is said, it is said, quote, I wish there are people there in Africa hoping something that there be some dollars or their money or investment or land that he could give before he dies. You know what he said? I wish I have something to leave to each of you. He said to the handful of people present, but I give it all to Jesus long ago. Church, the time is not your side. Maximize now this opportunity while the world is changing and you are the pillar and the light of the world. Let's start from our hearts to our relationship, to our church, to our time. In the busy, busy life that is not testifiable, no. Give the best to him for investment. And when you close your eyes with one tear and give up the last breath of your life, I'm very sure I'm looking forward to that. Before I give up my last breath, here's to my eyes. I have given it all. Jesus. That's my prayer. And I mean, I challenge you to the very best that you can, the very best that you know. And you must be started today in Jesus' name.
Hoje 